Welcome to Small Arms Solutions. Today we're looking at the HK SP5, which is a very, very special pistol. I want to go back in time a little bit to the HK94, uh, which was pre-1994. The HK94 was the final HK variant that was available to the commercial market up until 2016. Around 2016, HK introduced the SP5K. Now, the SP5K, as I said, that was the first HK MP5 variant offered to the commercial market since 1994. And as happy as it made some people, it upset other people because they got it, but they just didn't get it right. The SP5K did not have a threaded barrel and it did not have the tri-lock mount for a flash suppressor either. So you would go out and you could spend $2,600, $2,800 on a HK SP5K pistol that if you wanted to put a suppressor on, you would have to remove the barrel, put an aftermarket barrel in there that wasn't HK so you could be able to mount your suppressor, which really upset people, you know, to have to spend that kind of money and then not be able to suppress it without having to put another barrel on it. And of course, one of the things that makes these guns so special is the HK barrels, the unobtainium French steel that they use, uh, the polygon rifling, plus the, the fluting that's in there. The other thing that upset people was the fact that they did not have the paddle magazine release. That was one thing also that was missing. And the other thing it was is it had 1913 rails uh, mounted to the receiver on top, which was not which you would have in an original uh, HK MP5K. So they really didn't get it right because, again, people wanted to have that ability. Now, if you didn't want to, didn't want to have to put a suppressor on it, you were fine. It wasn't an issue at all. But for the most part, it just wasn't what people wanted. In 2019, HK rectified themselves with the SP5, which you see right here. Uh, they listened to all the complaints, and they fixed them. As you can see on the SP5, we have a threaded one half by 28 threaded uh, muzzle. And we also have the tri-lock for the tri-lock um, suppressor mounting system. We have the standard profile HK handguard, and we do have now the paddle that's on there. And we have the traditional uh, top, which did not have the 1913 rail on top, where you'd use a standard H&K type or arms type clamp to mount your optic on there. Now, looking at this, you can see we have a pistol, we have a polymer uh, back on here, and we have a uh, we have a sling spool. Now this is utilized to have a sling put on there so you would put the sling on and push forward that would help you stabilize it. That didn't work well too well for me so I ended up going with a SP Tactical brace which we're going to talk about in just a few minutes. But looking at it this is exactly what everybody has wanted. They wanted a HK and HK MP5. Now, prior to this, I mean, of course you have to look at the price. The price tag was the thing that kills everything that's H and K. This price tag was around twenty eight hundred dollars. Now, there's a lot of competition out there. You had uh, you know, Pakistan Ordnance Factory. You had uh, PTR. You had Zenith. So you had several you know several options now of buying uh, as, you know, buying MP5 type rifles and SMGs. Uh, and this is particularly being a pistol, you have no problem registering this as an SBR and putting a standard stock on it if that's what you chose as well. And of course, it would take on any MP5 upgrade that you had. Now, uh, the magazines we have here, we have the standard HK Steel magazine. Another magazine that I tried was the Elite Tactical Systems Polymer magazine. Now, talking to a lot of people, they did not like these. They said they, they swelled up and had a difficult time removing them. I have to say, uh, I have two of these, which I tested, and neither one of them would swell up when it was if they were full. They were they pulled free without a problem. There was no problems with reliability whatsoever. So uh, I have to give a good mark to the uh, ETS for the fact that I've had no problems with the ones that I've had. So as you previously stated, I had great difficulty with the stock. So I got a hold of SB Tactical and I said, I want to try your new HK PDW uh, defend, you know, the, the brace. And basically what it is, it's the exact same thing as a standard MP5 stock, but it utilizes a brace. And it had your three positions, and this is exactly what I wanted to try. So it was very simple to replace. All I had to do is pop out the rear pin, pop that cap right off, Uh, it makes it a little bit easier if you have this thing uh, extended like so when you put it on. Slide on like so. To get a little bit of a pressure on there, insert the pin. Slide in like so, it locks in place like standard. And now we have it. And just like the standard HK MP5 stop, we push the lever and we have up to three positions. This pistol brace made all the difference in the world being able to shoot and being able to shoot accurately. So we're going to go over some of the specifications. So again, we have the standard MP5 caliber 9mm, an overall length of 17.8 inches, weighed about 5.1 pounds, with a height of about 8.66 inches. The barrel length was 8.86 inches German cold hammer forge, the 6 right polygon rifle barrel with fluted chamber. Of course, the operating system is the traditional 
Orgelay Blowback Magazine Standard, 30 cal at 30 rounds. You can also have 10 to 15 rounds as well. The rear sight, we have the, the traditional HK diapter rear sight with a fixed front sight post. The trigger on here is something that uh, I never particularly cared for just due to the fact that it was a long, spongy pull. I mean, when you look at the trigger here, if you look at how far you have to pull back on that before it actually goes, it's quite long and it's quite spongy. Then when you look at the reset, we have a long forward reset. So we have a little bit longer of a spongier trigger. It's a lot more uh, spongier than you would say that of like an AR-15 type trigger. So it's a little bit more spongy. That's just part of the way the design is. So as I said, this pistol, uh, this uh, pistol brace made all the difference in the world, giving it all the feel of the standard MP5. Now, unlike, as I said, unlike the SP5K, we can we now have a threaded barrel. So we did use a suppressor on this. So what I decided to use was the Atlas Pelham. Now the Pelham is, uh, that's Joe Moe, he's a former Sons of Gun guy who opened up his own shop called Atlas Defense. And Atlas, like Red Jacket, specialized in suppressors. And this is one of their suppressors. Now, the Pelham suppressor is rated for 9mm 37. In fact, I, only, I also use this on a uh, 5.7 by 28. Three-piece suppressor manufactured out of all aluminum. And I've had very much luck with this. This has been used for probably three, four years on, on numerous different kinds of uh, pistols and, uh, and submachine guns, as well as uh, the SBR type rifles. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take this out to the range and we're going to see how it shoots. Now, like expected, I fired well over 500 plus rounds out of this without a single malfunction. Uh, most of the ammunition that I had used was uh, the Black Hills 115 grain full metal jacket, and Subsonic mostly used the SIG 147 grain full metal jacket, and I probably used uh, a little bit of the Magtech full metal jacket 147 as well. Uh, the target shooting that we did with this was not, and we didn't shoot paper with it, it had iron sights, and my sights, my eyesight's not that great, so we shot steel. And connecting with targets from uh, 50, from 5 to 25 yards was no problem whatsoever. The MP5 is legendary, reliable. Um, if you compare it to some of the things that are available today, it's rather outdated. You know, uh, there's a lot of nostalgia that goes along with the MP5 just because it's of its long service life. We do have uh, different submachine guns now that really are, are the next generation, you know, like the SIG MCX, which we're going to be seeing a video coming up on the SIG MCX versus this where you're going to see a new generation versus older generation uh, in, in the differences. But this this came out in the 70s, 60s and 70s, and it's been very, very popular, very, very well served. 
Uh, the MP5 saw a lot of use in the U.S. military as well as uh, U.S. law enforcement for many, many, many years. It was probably around the 1990s where it was found that the 223 FMJ or 223 different types of projectiles and, it's, and the short barrel rifles, uh, 10 and a half inch, 11 and a half inch commandos and so forth, M4s, was much more effective in uh, urban environments, meaning it didn't over penetrate. The lighter, the lighter bullets would come apart in wallboard and, and, and concrete and cement where the 9 millimeters did not. So it was found that it was better. So you saw a drastic decrease in use of 9 millimeter SMGs to the point now where you'd be very hard pressed to find a police department in the United States or a SWAT team that still uses anything that's a 9 millimeter. Uh, they pretty much have all converted over to 5.56. Five, Overseas is a different story. Uh, I've seen these things still in use many places overseas. In fact, I was in uh, Bahrain, and uh, the MOD was had me take a look. I said, did they show me some of their their guns? They said, do you think we should refurbish or replace? And these guns were from the 1970s, 60s or 70s. These suckers were old, and God knows how many times they had been refurbished. And, you know, it's just time to it was time to return, you know, to retire them and go with something new. And my recommendation was them to go with an M4 type rifle or some kind of a 5.56 because it was outdated. The 9mm concept or 9mm submachine guns, although not popular in the United States, they're still looked at as viable in other parts of the world. Uh, we saw a lot of them in the Middle East. I saw a lot of them in South America uh, and even in Europe to this day. But uh, military-wise, not so much. Uh, you have just many, many better options than 5.56 five, uh, SBRs, as I said. And, of course, now with the introduction of 300 Blackout, it even puts the submachine gun further and further uh, out, of need, out of use or out of need. So uh, overall, it's an excellent weapons platform. I've uh, been very, very pleased with it. You know, we're going to take a look at it a little bit further. We're going to take it apart. There's nothing really special about it. It's about the same as you would see for any 9mm SMG in the market. So let's take this thing apart and remove the suppressor first. Good deep thread so, this, so the suppressor's not going to come off. So we have our rear takedown pin. We're going to pull that right out. And that needs a little bit of... A little bit of help. That pops out like so. We remove the pistol brace right out. We can push forward to release the magazine. Pull downward on the pistol grip. Remove this, that whole area. Now pull rearward on the bolt carrier charging handle. Then we drop out the bolt and bolt carrier group. At the front, we pop that out. And now we have the handguard that we need to remove. And that's really all there is to it. Stamp sheet metal. You know, the, the cost is always amaze me because if you look at how inexpensive these are to make, uh, literally how much they cost is just literally mind boggling. And once you have everything apart, close up with the bolt and bolt carrier, you can see your roller, your rollers right here. When that thing is in the lock position, you can see the, the rollers engage, disengage, engage, disengage. So you have a, a relatively heavy bolt, uh, which is necessary for the, for the delay. This assembly here, you just rotate that quarter turn. Comes right off. You can remove your firing pin. That's all there is to it. And as you can see by the shape of the centerpiece right here, as it moves in and out, this is what cams and allows the rollers to engage and to disengage. It goes forward. It's all the way forward. It engages the rollers lock lock position. As it as the bolt moves rearward to unlock, it it unlocks the rollers allowing the bolt to unlock and move rearward. Reassembly. Drop your firing pin in like so. Put it into the, the bolt carrier. Should like so. And there you have it. Reassembly, very, very simple. First thing we'll do is I'll throw the hangar back on there. And of course, any aftermarket H um, HKMP5 type handguards goes on without any issue. Drop the pin in like so and push it in place, lock it in place. Now what we're going to do is we're going to drop the bolt carrier group, make sure it's in the unlock position. I'm going to insert your recoil spring assembly. You can insert your pistol grip fire control group assembly. Now we'll put the original cap back on it. I'm going to push that into place. Like so. Your standard controls, your, your ambidextrous safety. Of course, you have your top switch. This is something that comes of uh, a lot of discussion regularly is whether the old HK slap is good or not. 
Now, I've heard people say that it's not a problem, and I've heard other people say that uh, you'll damage the receiver. So which one's right? I have no idea because you'll find an equal number of both. Traditionally, you see people doing the HK slap. It's pretty, it's pretty common. For those of you who aren't familiar with the MP5, the bolt does not lock open the last shot. After you hear it, you hear a click, and then you either you, you drop your magazine and insert your new one. The other way to reload is to basically fire your last shot, lock the bolt open, insert your magazine in the bottom, and close. Now, one thing that I will say is if you decide to do it from a closed bolt, these magazines, when you have the full 30 rounds in them, they can be quite stiff to get in. You may have to really slap them into place. Uh, so that doesn't make reloading that much easier. The easiest way to reload certainly would be to have it open on the, to, to lock it open and then insert in and then and close it. Something we certainly found. But, you know, it has, a, it has the same ergonomics as the G3. You know, we're looking at an old-time an old design. Um, you look at today, you have MB bolt catch, MB bolt release. Uh, you'll have MB magazine release. You'll have everything. Um, this sort of definitely slows you down in today's terms. Looking at the human engineering of the AR-15 M16 series stripe rifle, it makes everything so much easier to manipulate without having to remove your finger from the, your, you know, your right hand from the pistol grip. But there's a lot of nostalgia with the MP5, and it's always going to have its fans because of that. It's, you know, it's got its diehard look to it. It's got its 1980s uh, anti-terrorist look to it. it. There's a lot of tradition that goes in there. Are there better current military options now? Absolutely. This, for the most part, in my opinion, is a very obsolete system compared to systems like the MPX, the Colt 900 submachine gun, the CZ Scorpion. Um, guns that are much easier to use, much quicker to use, uh, much you know more modular. You can utilize you know, your rails, uh, your laser, laser designators, your cameras, or any kind of accessory that you would want to have. You have those that ability. So, but you know, sometimes sometimes things are from the past and they stay that way. Uh, I feel that's the way this is. But HK will always sell these because you will always have the people who are interested. Uh, HK really did a great job with bringing the SP5 out uh, to the commercial market. Uh, it's just unfortunate that price tag is so prohibitive for your average person. I'd love to have one of these in my collection, but I just can't justify you know nearly three thousand dollars by the time it's all said and done uh, to have one with the tax stamp and so forth. This is really an awesome uh, pistol. Um, I certainly, if I had th this in my collection, I would be SBRing it. I'll be making it into a standard MP5 with a standard stock. I, mean, I think a lot of people are going to end up doing that because you can have exactly what you wanted and you can have that HK name on the top. I hope you all enjoyed this video. If you do, please click like, please subscribe, even better share. Thank you.